Hello, I'm Forrester, and welcome to the ninth installment in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died, the hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout. For this episode, I'm designing a command module for visiting the moon, and in this case, taking a contract to rescue a Kerbal from orbit, but I hope to reuse the design in future missions. The module itself is propelled by a Terrier engine with plenty of fuel, so if I wanted to take a lander or a rover out to one of the moons, as long as it's light enough, it should support that. I've got all of the amenities, including solar power and RCS, which was those two monopellant tanks at the bottom, and a launch escape system on the top of the rocket for safety as well. Just going through checking my staging for that abort system, remembering I want to keep my Kerbals alive, and just a single pilot for this trip, which is Gizon, and that will leave a space for our Kerbal Rescue, which is going to pay for this mission. Two seconds, and we have liftoff. So, this footage I have sped up slightly just to keep things moving through in the allotted time for the episode. At this point, the two solid rocket boosters on the side are doing almost all of the heavy lifting. In fact, I have to throttle down the main engine a little bit just to keep the speed under control. This is a quite powerful rocket. I do enjoy having a, a rocket with plenty of Delta V options in it, such as this setup, as we stage the solid rocket boosters. So I've called this, I say, command module. It's really a command and service module as it does have power to feed into whatever the payload is. I call it the Juno. Uh, the Juno 1 rocket being the first mission that I'm taking this rocket out for. Uh, Juno was the queen of the gods and actually in, in reality ended up being a NASA Jupiter space probe. Uh, but I do like using uh, Greek and Roman themes for my rocket names as I'm sure many of you Kerbal enthusiasts do. At this point here, just getting some altitude and some horizontal speed just to get closer to achieving orbit before I go for main engine cutoff. So this mission is also a little bit of a test for all of the technology on this rocket just to make sure I've got all the calculations correct and I've not missed something glaringly obvious that the Kerbals need to survive. There we have main engine cut off as we propel ourselves into the Kerbal night. I have got the launch escape system and I've got a fairing on the engine ready to jettison as I cruise up in altitude. Dip the nose down, jettison the launch escape system, it's no longer required, and also just drop that aerodynamic fairing as I'm high enough now that it's not necessary. And with that launch escape system separated successfully, just going ahead here and just keeping on putting on some horizontal speed just tweaking the orbit ready for uh, orbital maneuvers and really for me what I'm trying to do here is keep the fuel in the final stage reserved for doing as little of the circularization as possible. I still want to jettison all of the, the space trash as it were from the previous stages so that they do fall back down to the planet but equally I don't want to be using too much fuel from that upper stage because uh, ultimately that's our mission payload. And there with a periapsis of just over 30 kilometers, just tweaking this slightly, bring that up slightly before I jettison the second stage. And there we have second engine cut off, which just leaves the payload, the final stage, which I'll use just to do the orbital burn. There we have it, orbit achieved. Let's look at our target, which is the moon. So, with these new fancy manoeuvre nodes just planning out, joining, rejoining, and getting an encounter. So the, the Delta V for this mission there at 4,000 meters a second is absolutely overkill. But remembering, this is actually also about testing out the design because I want to be able to use this to transfer 
landers or rovers out to the moons in the future so it will need extra delta v to carry a heavy payload on that docking port on the nose and here i'm going ahead and just burning out towards the moon for the encounter burn 37 minutes into the mission just one orbit around Kerbin pretty much at this point but as i start getting out further out into the uh, immediate vicinity of the planet we'll start adding some time on the clock for future missions we'll start seeing them rack up into days and there we have it so just tweaking the encounter ever so slightly to get nice and close in and time warping out to the moon so as I get close into the moon, I'm going to do a orbital burn by just burning into the retrograde to achieve orbit. And one of the next things that I'll need to do is just make sure that the craft is on the correct orbital inclination to meet up with the command pod of our stranded Kerbal in orbit. And with a quick inclination adjustment burn, start planning to have a rendezvous. Now this mission with Gizon Kerman on board as well will also help just to train him up. He'll get the valuable experience from having visited the moon. So we're at our first intersection there, just using that to fine tune so that when we get to our next pass, we can get in nice and close and rescue the Kerbal aboard that craft. I have no idea how he got there. We took the contract. Some other space program has failed to do proper planning, as uh, is often want to happen. And there we have it, a rendezvous. So just using the RCS thrusters to start closing in towards the target. Went slightly too fast there. Come back around for another pass. Slow down nicely. And spin around so the ladder is accessible to our new member of the space program, who is Mabel or Mabel Kerman. We now have two passengers aboard this command module as we burn to escape the influence of the moon. Still over 2,700 meters a second of delta V on this spacecraft, which is telling me that should be absolutely plenty for doing missions out to the moons in the future, as well as potentially taking a payload with us when we go out there. So all that remains now is to safely re-enter the atmosphere as we do get a bit of a fly past of the moon there which is just adjusting the orbit just make sure that's outside of the atmosphere and then for the interest of safety and security and because I have got this extra delta V just doing a full deceleration burn at the periapsis just so that when we do enter the atmosphere it's at as low a speed as possible less pressure on the heat shield. So we're approaching this being a six day mission which is one of the longest missions that I've done so far but equally uh, we know that rescuing Kerbals is a valuable enterprise. We've tested a design uh, assuming we can land safely and we've brought another Kerbal into our space program as well as valuable funds of course. The two-man command pods I often find a little bit difficult to plan the missions for because uh, ultimately you'll often find a payload will have a crew requirement, so for example a lander, so you need to make sure you've got the appropriate crew members for the task as we re-enter the atmosphere. So here you can see the two-man command pod with the heat shield on the bottom, the docking port junior on the top and just two parachutes for re-entry more than sufficient for this little command pod. We 
Well, it's a little tentative in atmospheric re-entry just to avoid any potential issues. But that heat shield is facing the right direction and is taking the brunt of the re-entry effects. Thankfully, this was a fairly low speed re-entry. And there we are, through the worst of the atmosphere as the chutes deploy. And we cruise down for a nice, gentle splashdown. And so, as the ninth episode concludes, please continue to like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and get involved by giving me encouragement in the comments. I happily leave you with a ubiquitous closing remark for every mission in this series. No Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.